Hi everyone, my name is Sam. I am the owner of Comic Sam's Crafts and today I am going to show you how to make this cute little paw print bookmark. To do this, you're going to need size 10 crochet thread, worsted weight yarn, a two millimeter crochet hook, an embroidery needle, and I also like using a button safety pin as a stitch marker. The colors are completely customizable. The crochet thread is the color of the paw and the worsted weight yarn is the color of the pads of the paw. To start off, make a magic loop and then you will work the first round into the magic loop. Right, and chain one to secure the magic loop. And then the first round, you're going to do six single crochet stitches into the magic loop. And that is the first round done. Um, I like using stitch markers to mark the last stitch um, when I'm working in continuous rounds. Um, so that's where I put the stitch marker. You might want to put it on the first stitch of the round. It's just up to you. But these are worked in continuous rounds, so you're just going to start off with round two without doing a slip stitch into chain one. So round two is going to have 12 single crochet stitches, so that is an increase in each stitch. So two single crochet stitches into each stitch of round one. And there we go, we have round two done. And again, round three, we're not starting with a chain one or a slip stitch in a chain one, we're just going straight into the first stitch of round two. And round three has 18 single crochets, so that is going to be an increase and then one single crochet. And you're gonna repeat that six times. So it's two stitches into the first stitch, one stitch into the next, and then repeat that six times. And there we go, round three is done. Now round four, um, we're only, gonna, only going to crochet halfway around and then we'll flip it and then do round five. Um, so round four is gonna have some shaping to it. So it's gonna be single crochets and half double crochets. So we're gonna start off by doing a single crochet in the first two stitches. So one single crochet in each of the first two stitches and then you're gonna do two half double crochets in each of the next four stitches. So that's eight half, do half double crochets in all um, into the next four stitches. Once you have your eight half double crochets, you are going to do one slip stitch, or sorry, one single crochet into the next two stitches. Like so. So it'll look like this. Um, I believe that's 12 stitches in all. And then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and turn. Okay, so it looks like this. You've slip stitched. Turn like this and then you're gonna start round five. Make sure you don't start going into the slip stitch. You've got like a little stitch here. That's the slip stitch. Don't go into the slip stitch. Do the first stitch of round five um, into the top of the last single crochet in round four. So for round five, I really should be holding this closer to the camera. For round five, you're going to want to start off again with doing one single crochet into the first two stitches. So one single crochet in one stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to want to do in the next stitch here, a half double crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. So into the same stitch, you do a half double crochet and a double crochet stitch like so. 
And then in the next stitch, you're going to do a double crochet, a half double crochet, and a single crochet. So double crochet, half double crochet, and a single crochet in this next stitch. So it will look like this. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do three double crochet stitches in the same stitch. So that's one, two, and three. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna do a half double crochet and a single crochet. So half double and single. And then, so this is half, got half of the paw done. So you're just going to repeat what you did for these first two backwards. So the next stitch would be single crochet, half double crochet, and then three double crochets into the same stitch. Three. And then single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. So single crochet into this next stitch. And then in the same stitch, do a half double crochet. Oh, need more yarn. Single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet, like so. And then you're going to do a double crochet, double crochet, um, and a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then again, just do one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into the stitch after that. And then just slip stitch to the last stitch in, I believe that's round three, because um, I left my stitch marker in there from the end of round three. So once it's done, it will look like this. Um, and then you're going to want to cut the yarn and fasten off, leaving a long tail. I don't know why I always forget to say we need scissors, but you need scissors. <clears throat> so you've got a long tail for sewing, but this is what the paw looks like, and you will need to make two of these. Once you have your two paws, you can... Well, technically you can do it at the end of each one, but you just want to fasten off, but make sure you leave the end. Um, personally, I like leaving the ends on both of them just in case I need extra yarn. Um, I usually try to sew it up with the tail from only one of them, but um, if I accidentally cut the tail from one too short to go all the way around, it's convenient to still have the tail from the other one to use as well. Right, once you have both of your paws and they are fastened off, you are ready to add the um, pads to one of them because you'll only do the pads to one of them and then you'll sew them together. Technically, you could do this after you sew them together, um, but I think it's just easier to do it like this. So you have your worsted weight yarn and I like cutting a lot of it just so I don't have to tie more ends than I have to. Um, and you're just going to attach it to your embroidery needle and then you're going to shape the pads and technically you can shape the pads however you want. Um, it's a little bit of trial and error in my experience. Um, so for this one, I think I'm just going to go up through here and leave a little bit for tying it off in the end. Um, so that looks like uh, the stitch in the third round. Um, and then you're just going to shape the paw, how, or the paw pad, however, however you want. And sometimes it's a little annoying to do this with horse weight. Okay, yeah, I can't do that. 
We might need some pliers. Wow, and it's still not... Okay, there we go. And then you're just going to shape it however you want. Um, I try to keep the bottom part of the pad coming out the same stitch um, for each one, but in order to get the nice puffy wide shape um, for the top, no, nope, don't want that. Um, you will want to go into different stitches for the top part. All right, when you're happy with one of the pads, just move on to the next one. Um, yeah, and you can make them however big you want them to be. They can be whatever shape you want them to be. There's the second pad. It worked. And there we go. And now you just need to do the pad. Do a shape that's kind of like smaller at the top and then wider at the base. Again, it's really just what you, what you want it to look like. You could make it shaped like a heart if you want, that would be cute. But you're just gonna make it whatever shape you feel like. I like doing a general outline of the base paw pad um, and then just filling it in. Well, this one ended up coming out more like a circle, but you know, still looks cute. Um, and I'm happy with that, so just play around with it until you get the shape that you like. Um, I have made three of these and none of them have had the same shape. Um, beauty of making handmade things. You genuinely never know what you're gonna get. Um, but once you're done shaping the paw pads, just um, tie it off um, and then cut off the excess. But all right, once you have both of these, so you have one that has the pop pads on it and one of them that doesn't, make sure you've got it um, lined up the same way. Um, so one of them, the uh, say this is the top side, um, one of them, the back side is going to be facing out and it, it really does not matter, but there is a slight variation in the shape of little toes. Um, so you really want to line it up so it looks the same. So you're going to line it up like this. And then take your end from one of them and use your embroidery needle and stitch along. God, there's so many ends. That's the annoying thing about leaving the ends on. But you're gonna stitch into each stitch and the corresponding stitch on, let's see, that should be the right one. So you're just gonna stitch together like this and then, so you're gonna go back and forth like this. Just stitch it back and forth until you have it um, completely, well, not completely stitched together. Just stitch until I stop. All right, once you get to the bottom, uh, you're gonna need to attach your chain for the bookmark, which I am just now realizing I forgot to tell you to make. All right, for the bookmark chain, you need crochet thread, slip knot, and chain 70, or however long you want the chain to be. I, it really does not matter. All right, once you have your chain or the bookmark and you're almost completely sewn up paw, you are going to insert through the bottom. Is that the bottom? I think that's the bottom. Yes, yes, probably. Um, so you're going to insert it through the bottom and fasten it by just tying it to uh, the back of the paw.
And there you have the string attached. And also just now realizing, I forgot to tell you to lightly stuff the thing. So we're gonna find out if I can do that now. So you're just gonna lightly stuff it. You can also just not stuff it. It honestly doesn't really matter. Just lightly stuff the paw. Again, it's not necessary. Um, I like the way it looks, but it, it really doesn't matter. I find it easier to stuff um, small things like this if you roll the polyfill up. Okay, now that you got the paw stuffed, you're gonna pick up where you left off and keep sewing um, the paw closed. I like to put this thread through um, through the the chain just for like a little bit more security, um, but that's not like necessary. Once it is completely tied together, um, you are going to take your embroidery needle and put the ends out through a hole. Um, I believe there's four ends, so you're gonna do two per hole. Um, and then once you have them going out the same hole, you're just gonna tie those two ends together um, and use your needle to push the knot in and then cut off the excess and use the needle to um, put the little teeny tiny ends um, into the body of uh, the paw. All right, so you just got the tassel left um, and you need to cut uh, six, three or four inch pieces of yarn. I like using my tails that I cut off for this. So just, I'm just not wasting yarn, um, but I use a little cardboard piece to make it nice. Once you have your six strings, um, you're just going to attach them to the bottom of the bookmark um, to form a tassel. I do have a YouTube video um, that goes into detail about how to do that, so um, if you're unsure, just go and check that out. Um, once you got it about even, cut off the ends, and there you go. There we go. Paw print mark. If you enjoyed this, um, make sure to give it a like. Um, the written pattern is available for free on my blog, um, and there is a PDF version um, that will be available um, for a low cost on my website and on my Etsy and my Ravelry.